And we're off. We're headed off to buy our tickets to Anchor Watts. I think we're gonna go with the three day pass because there's just so much to see. Welcome to our channel. Join us on a budget friendly exploration of the world's wonders. Hit subscribe and let the journey begin. Thank you. Thank you. Alkun. Okay, we just got our tickets at the ticket counter. They cost $126? $124. dollars for two tickets for three days apiece. And they take your picture and I can't can't quit laughing at my picture. <laughs> The first temple we visit is Bonte Kide Temple, also known as Citadel of Monks Cells. This temple is a Buddhist temple that was built in the mid 12th to early 13th centuries. We just got to our first temple of the day and it was only about a 20 minute drive from our hotel in Siem Reap. We are already mesmerized by these stone temples. This is Srasrong Temple. I am sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but our driver told us this is the one with the big pool. So this area is known for its unique and complicated technical waterway systems. Okay, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You may have heard that term before. We looked it up just to get the correct meaning. It is the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. In broken English, our guide said, this is the temple with the tree. This is Ta Prom Temple. It was built in the late 12th century and early 13th century. When this temple was abandoned, trees took root in the stones. That is what this temple is famous for. Everybody waits in line. Have a picture taken. There has been a lot of natural decay and looting to Angkor Wat over the years. A lot of the temples are being rebuilt or stabilized to prevent collapse. What are you doing, Trevi? Cool enough. It is hot, 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 hot. Hot. 90 degrees, 100 with heat index. This is Taekyo Temple. The construction of the temple began in the year 975 and it was never completely finished. It is one of the largest temples in Anchor. This temple is gigantic and there's maybe 10 people here.
we've located the world's most annoying bug. It sounds like a smoke detector, or fire alarm, emergency signal. It is so loud. Sounds like there's 10 million of them. And as soon as one, you walk away from one, you will start hearing another one in the distance and it just screams. Well, you know, it's a big deal when they have security and traffic control and it was a traffic jam to get here. We have not seen that in Simreap at all, traffic-wise. We are at the Padam Backing Temple. This temple is the first mountain temple built in the Anchor Complex. It is the most popular spot for sunsets. We wait in line for 10 minutes. One, no. one bad, 25 minutes. Just us and a few friends. It's a popular place. We didn't wait for the official sunsets. Kind of wasn't my thing to be shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people. Uh, in a hundred degrees. Yeah, in a in hundred degrees. I was hoping I could set up a time lapse and do something cool and get some photos, but uh, we were gonna be 10 people deep. Trying to get the sunset. Trying to get a shot, so. We peeled out. We're not the only ones, but uh, hopefully with our next two days here, we can get a cool sunset somewhere else. Yeah, we'll find something cool. Less populated. Yeah. Here we go. Day two, Anchor Watt. So there's so many temples to see and the sheer size of them, our little camera does not do it justice, but it's just amazing. We are getting ready to enter Angkor Wat Temple, the main attraction. It was the capital in the 9th century to the 15th century. So over, there's over 400 square kilometers that are considered an anchor. And then this is like the main temple, which is called Anchor Wat. This temple is huge. Now you can hire a guide to take you around these temples here at Angkor Wat. Um, our driver gave us a really good summary right before we walked in, so we didn't feel like we needed to hire a guide. One thing that was touching that he said, his family used to hide here during the Khmer Rouge regime. So they would come here in the night and the evenings and seek refuge here. You walk in, you can see bullet holes from those times because of the fighting. Uh, due to it only being recent history, uh, it's touching to hear some of these personal stories. We found a great view, but even better yet, we found a wonderful breeze.
And towards the end, find some cold water and a coconut. Don't get any better than that. It is only about 11.30. We did have breakfast around nine, but if Trevor sees food, he's gonna stop and get some. I'm like a fish. I have a trigger. If I see it, I'm gonna eat it. On to the next temple. said, there's monkeys, there's monkeys, there's monkeys. They're fighting, they're fighting. We don't like monkeys. Here they got the reflection when you take a picture and then you will see the reflection the whole temple in the water. So this is the best one. He was saying that he used to walk here for school and it would take a, it was a slow walk because he had to bring his cow with him. We had a good laugh about his story. We're at our second temple of the day. This is Bayan Temple. Okay, so there are three temples here that are fairly close to one another. We're at our second one. This is Bapun Temple. We found a little quiet spot just to take a photo. There are so many little areas like this that are just passed by because of the gigantic temples just overshadow these little areas. But a lot of work went into this um, whole area. It's just neat to find a little spot and take it all in. This area doesn't even make the mentionable list, yet it's still so impressive. This is day three of our Anchor Wat Pass, and we decided we would do it a little different today. Instead of hiring a tuk-tuk to take us around, we rented a moped for $10, and we're going to kind of see it ourselves and go at our own pace and stop if we want. If not, just cruise by. Take a look. As always, I'm lost on a moped because I can't see where I'm going. We got to straighten out. That's part of the fun of it though, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, he just came over and helped us. Thank you. This is Teikyo Temple again. We wanted to come back here because we didn't have enough time to explore and climb around when we were here the other day. Like we have said, there are so many temples and so much to see. Oh yeah. Kind of steep. Yeah, really steep. Very beautiful, steep climb temple, but worth it. Now we are walking back to our moped and we are aware there are monkeys in this forest. <laughs> so we are a little on edge. <laughs> Mm 
nothing feels better than being in the shade, getting on your moped and having some sort of air movement and breeze after walking around at these temples when it's really hot. It's about 90 degrees and no air movement and really humid. It's hot. We left Anchor Wat and I think we're going to a landmine museum. If we can find it. If we can find it, we'll see. Pavement! Oh my gosh! Any words, Trevor? Don't get lost. Lindsay's navigating from here on out. We got lost around Anchor Wat. I knew a general direction that was going to lead me towards a Cambodian landmine museum. So while getting lost, taking dirt roads in the middle of nowhere. We found a paved road. We got some reception and got our directions to the Landmine Museum. For $5 a person, goes for a good cause. This was so much more than I was expecting. I was expecting just a landmine museum. Little did I know it was also an orphanage for kids that were impacted directly by landmines. So reading their stories, uh, how this place made them better and able to live a fulfilled life, it's uh, very emotional. He and the man who started this all is here. He works here and he will talk to you about anything very humble, knowledgeable person. It's an honor to have met him. Well, I think that is it for the day. Finished up our last day at Angkor Wat and got to see the Cambodian Landmine Museum. Mm -hmm.